Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Magic Online and my personal experience with Magic Online as well as an inside look at how much money I spent. Um, I've been playing Magic Online since it came in a CD. I think that was 8th edition it came in a CD and then you had to put the CD in. Uh, I had an Odell, I played it with my Survivor game. I remember those two games because I played them together. I would play Magic Online, they would crash. So it's not much different from today, actually. Uh, so Magic Online has always been this uh, issue where uh, if you don't have a local game store or if you don't have uh, people who want to draft, you don't have people who want to play Magic with you, then you can pick up a game anytime you want. That is a critical selling point of Magic Online. And that's why Magic Online, in my opinion, is way better than a local game store in terms of hey, I need to get this game today. It's a Tuesday night at 2 a.m. I want to play some Magic because you have that addiction. Uh, Magic right now is only played normally on Friday Night Magic, at least where I live, and Humble. Um, and it's, you know, you can go into the city and you can get Modern Tuesdays or Thursdays, EDH, and you can play Magic. It's just more of a hassle. So that's something that Magic Online does a lot better than a local game store is you will always be able to find a game no matter where you are, even if you're out in the country somewhere, as long as you have, you know, internet, and no matter uh, what time it is or what time of the week it is. So that's the main benefit of why I, and that's the main reason I play Magic Online, was, you know, you build up a collection and then you feel like, okay, it's got a little cheaper. They did some stuff that I didn't like, uh, and I will tell you, I quit after Vintage Masters. Like, I quit right after I started um, buying packs of that set, and everyone said that this was the greatest investment of all time. Uh, and I believed it. I didn't make a video about it, but I kind of believed it. I went, it went along the hype, because like, yo, yeah, Black Lotus, oh yeah, Moxes. This, there's no right way this would be cheaper, but that's not how the Magic Online economy works. So I sold out of those cards, made back my money and a tiny bit of profit, but for the most part, I've just realized I don't want to hold Magic Online. The last breaking point for me, so I do play Magic Duels, which I don't know if I can recommend it to you, but it's not terrible like I, I hate saying that but like you can only play one mythic and you can make one of a type so one if a card is a mythic you only have one copy of it in your deck you can have two rares so it makes these decks really like strange and you can't draft so magic duels had draft and it still had all those really strange restrictions about mythics and rares and uncommons i would say okay yeah this is worth it let's do it um, but it's not. You cannot draft and it takes a lot. You need to buy these coins, like, right? Like, it's not cheap. Like, you can win some coins, but at most, like, at least for me, I can maybe, if I can win a booster pack a day, that's considered very good. So, Magic Online is, has its benefit, but the last straw was this Magic Next. And no information has come out about Magic Next, which you know, it's, it's good or bad. Um, it's kind of like the magic movie. Is it going to happen eventually? I truly believe it will happen eventually, but I don't know why they wouldn't want to hype it up. Um, I assume the toy line, you know, that ma magic action figures, the eight inch action figures that you can get at Barnes and Nobles and then the Funkos. I assume that was ramping up to the magic movie and those people, the toy line would resemble what the movie would be, but it was nothing like that. I don't know. I don't know what happened. They had a board game, they had a toy line, and then now they don't have either one. Or neither of those are doing very successful at the moment. I see the board game, I see the toy line on sale all the time. The last straw was his Magic Digital Next. So I know Magic Next will be an online platform because it says Magic Digital Next, I, and they've already mentioned it. And I know that they are very interested in esports, League of Legends. I love League of Legends. I love watching it. I can't tell you why. The commentators are so fun. They talk to each other. Uh, Dyrus just got his hair cut because he made a bet. I mean, these people are just fun to be. They just seem like good dudes. And I normally wouldn't watch something like that, but the commentary is so fun and the way they do it is so fun and there's action all the time. And even if you didn't understand League of Legends, you could understand who's winning, who's losing, and that's really important. So Magical Digital Next will be 
Magic's version of esports. Um, what am I basing this information on? Nothing. Just their stock information and what they've told their investors at the investor holding meeting. Where they want to be an esport, they consider themselves already a top esport, and they want to create a new system, Magical Digital Next. No matter what Magical Digital Next is, it's going to take away from Magic Online. Right? Because it couldn't possibly be worse from a user in a interface and user experience than Magic Online. Now, will it be like it, it cannot be worse than Magic Duels. Otherwise, they want to hype it this way. So what I'm expecting is I'm expecting a pay per month program where you have access to all the cards and you just pay them like $20 a month. A subscription based program which already exists for a lot of card games and or a Hearthstone model where it's a lot cheaper. So the one of the biggest issues I have Magic Online, it's not cheaper than the physical card game. It just isn't. I know some people will cite this deck or that deck and this price and that price. But yes, if you go on to FNM, you can at most draft two times a night. At most. And that assumes that you're there very, very late. But if you're a Magic on... So if you go to FNM once a week, at least in Humble, we have FNM once a week here, you can draft two times a week. Yes, you know, that's not cheap, but no, that's not expensive either. But if you have Magic Online, given the fact that we have a lot of Magic players, and myself included, have addicted personalities, you can draft as many times as you want. And that can be upwards of 10 times a week, especially if you're trying to stream it. Uh, so it's one of the main concerns I have is price. I hope Magical Digital Next will be more al along the lines price-wise as Magic Duels. And that will get a lot more people to play. Well, regardless of what happens, Magic Digital Next are going to make a big push for it. And it will take some of the traffic away from Magic Online. Otherwise, why make it? Right? Because this is supposed to be a digital software that um, offers people the opportunity to play magic, to learn magic. And that makes a lot of sense to me that way. Anyway, bye guys.